I have in my pocket something which I have found very useful. It's a flashlight. Now, a flashlight is very useful, but the problem with flashlights is that you have to change the battery. If you have a really good flashlight, after a while, you have to change the battery. And if you don't have batteries, like if I take this flashlight and I take out the battery, it doesn't turn on. Today, Jesus in the Gospel says that we are the light of the world. And it's true, we are the light of the world. It's an act of praise on the part of God. He's saying, like, we are the light of the world. But we're a lot like this flashlight. We're a lot like this flashlight in that we have to first recognize that we're loved. Like, we need to be recharged. We need to be conscious of the fact that we are excessively loved by God that he is the one who puts everything into our life, that he feeds us and clothes us, and he, he's the one who's acting, that he is powerfully acting amongst his children. This is something which can be taken, you can say, oh, that's not, I, I mean, I know, you know, you know, like God loves me, the hairs in my head are counted. You know, you've probably heard it a thousand times. But it's something which we need the battery to be recharged. We need to have that conviction because only if we have that conviction can we truly love others the way we ought to. We have to not just see that we're like, that God like likes us. Like, yeah, yeah, I put up with him. No, no, no. We have to see that we are excessively loved by God. Recently, about a month ago, about a month ago, my, my sister sent me an email and in the email, she's standing next, next to a, a young man and she has a, a ring on her finger and there's a big smile on her face and the caption for the email, or the, the phrase of the email is engaged with like 10 exclamation points. The wedding, God willing, will be at the end of this year. But it's beautiful because there's something, when somebody recognizes that they're loved, I even wrote this to my sister in the email. I said, look, there's a phrase from scripture, from the Song of Songs, chapter seven, it says, how, how fair and pleasant you are, O loved one, delectable maiden. How fair and pleasant you are. In other words, those phrase, that phrase of, of Song of Songs is saying, you recognize that you're loved. And I was asking, I was inviting my sister, I'm sorry, I always, my poor sister, she has to put up with me, I always get theological very quickly. But I said to my sister, you have, I hope that you're recognizing through this young man, who's a great guy, hopefully you recognize, well actually I said to her, I'm sure that you recognize through that, you're experiencing the love of God through that. You're experiencing God's love. Because God, even though this, this person is saying to you, and even if nobody has someone saying this to them, but God says to you, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna commit my entire life to you. I'm entrusting you with the rest of my existence. This, this fact we have to recognize, it has to, become, it has to become so vital in us. I wanna read from, from the book, of, from the book of, of Isaiah. It says, I give Egypt as your ransom. Egypt is, is a big place. I give Egypt as your ransom. Ethiopia and Sheba in exchange for you because you are precious in my eyes and honored and I love you. I give men in exchange for you, people in return for your life. What is this referring to? Is this referring just to like the spring of the, of the Israelites from Egypt? No, it's referring to the flight that Jesus Christ our Lord, who we're going to adore and receive today, although it looks like a piece of bread, he died for us. I'm saying it again, but this is, I'm not saying it in the sense of just to, just to say, I don't think it's enough just for me to say it. We need to spend the time in silence with Jesus and recognize and experience his love. We need to be recharged. Yesterday in the gospel that came out, where Jesus said to the disciples, come away by yourselves and rest a while. 
We need that. St. Teresa of Avila says it. Unless one is convinced of the love of God, they will never do great things. I remember there was an experience, this, is, this might seem like a very, not a very important experience, but for me it made a huge difference. In Rome as a seminarian, I remember I saw a religious walking in her habit and she was crossing just from one part of the street to the other and she was walking with just her head down, minding her own business. But she had, how to express it? It's something which is very poetic. She had just a, a soft, sweet smile on her face. She was walking down the street, so to speak, knowing that she was loved by God. She didn't say anything to me. I just saw her walking by. But just looking at her, I recognized that she was the light of the world. I recognized that she, although I hadn't seen her before, I recognized that she was walking in such a way that she was forgetting about everybody else in the universe, not because she despised them or anything like that, but she was so enthralled by the fact that she was so loved by God. And it did me a world of good. Not because she said anything, I just looked at that and I said, look, I'm also loved by God like that. I'm also beloved of God. And that experience helped me also to walk in the same way, at least to try. <laughs> to walk recognizing and to think while I'm walking of how excessively I'm loved by God. I know my father, there's, my father has recovered from cancer and having recovered a miraculous recovery from cancer. And one of the things that's changed is that now my father has become very, how do you say this? Sentimental is not quite the word, but it's kind of embarrassing because every once in a while, he'll just stare at you and he'll say, I'm, my name is Father Rene, but he, in home, I'm called Mikey. Just long story short. But he would just look at us and be like, he'd like turn his head slightly and be like, Mikey. And it was a way of just, it was just, his eyes were just like, his eyeballs were just oozing love. But we have to recognize that God loves us like that. It's not enough just for me during the sermon just to repeat it on this way and that way and the other way, quote scriptures. It's not enough. We need to spend the time the same way that we recharge our phone. We have to recharge the light of our hearts. Until we recharge, until we have, until we're plugged in, it's not going to sink in. And until that, we're not going to... You know what Mother Teresa of Calcutta says, how much should we give? How much should we be the light of the world? You have to give until it hurts. You have to give so much that your light turns off. In other words, you have to use yourself up to the point of being spent and needing to experience the love of God. He wants us to need him. It says it in the book of Proverbs. To be empty for God, your hand is to work. Give so much that you need to know that you're excessively loved. Amen.